Hello, my name is Wade Nemer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Recently, we did a show that was uh, filmed in Hawaii, and that show was Catch a Wave. And this program was brought to us by a gentleman named Greg Horn, who's done an outstanding job with that. We only had time to do the first part of it, so this is going to be the second part of the show. And Greg, again, welcome back. Aloha, Wade. Thanks for having me back on. I'm glad you made a little bit of time so we could finish it up. I'm sure the uh, audience is very curious to see how this finishes up. So um, for those that didn't see it, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, basically, um, so I'm both a, a realtor and an entrepreneur here on the North Shore of Kauai. Uh, I help startup founders raise capital from investors. And uh, you know, got involved with Rotary about four and a half years ago. Have been the vocational chair of the Rotary Club of Hanalei Bay now for this is my third Rotary year as as a board member and the vocational chair. So excited to be here. Great, great. And how did you get involved with Rotary? Yeah, it was fun. Uh, in a in a past life, in my first company, I, I built a crowdfunding platform for nonprofits, and so that. That experience when I came here, I knew I wanted to serve in some way and got involved with a, a sandcastle competition actually that was raising funds uh, from sponsors and they said, hey, the, the guys and gals over at Rotary did a ton to help us last year, why don't you go check it out? So I did, I went to a meeting, I was invited by the then president and got involved and you know, I was involved in nonprofit service work in college and, and other times in my life and so as soon as I showed up and saw all the amazing things that my fellow Rotarians were doing here on the North Shore of Kauai, I jumped in. Sounds good, great. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the show because uh, I'm sure everybody's waiting to see how this finishes up. This year, we were excited and, and really stoked to give honorary first year Rotary membership to our top three winners. Um, I know, and, and Ted, I'd love for you to chime in what it's been like uh, with Shannon, but it, it, you folks may have seen Shannon Hiramoto of Machine Machine she is an amazing business model, by the way, where basically she brings, she sources materials from thrift shops and ultimately wants to have her own thrift shop and garage sales and other secondhand means. And then her and her team of seamstresses will recreate those garments into either new garments, bags, other different ways to kind of upcycle those, those things that would have maybe gone to a landfill otherwise. And so her, her business model is amazing. And she's been so excited. She just sent me an email recently how excited she's been to connect with Ted. She's on the South Shore. So she's with the Poipu Rotary. And Ted, I, I don't know if you have a minute to chime in about Shannon. Yeah, we were delighted to um, reach out to Shannon when she won the third place prize. Uh, she lives and works near Rotary Club of Poipu Beach. And, uh, you know, she's a, a busy young mother with a lively four-year-old um, running a full-time business. So she doesn't have a lot of time to spend with us coming to meetings and doing some of the traditional things. Uh, but she has spoken at a club meeting. She's participated with us in some projects. Uh, and we've had members go and support other things that she's doing in the community at her shop. Uh, at a local shopping center, at an art gallery. Uh, so uh, it's been a, a developing relationship and one that we hope um, we can continue to help bring her into the fold and, and have her be a full-time active member after this year. Um, I also think it has benefited the club a little bit um, from our, our public image that uh, she's associated with our club and visible in our social media and our publicity. Uh, and I, I think that can helped contribute to us uh, recently inducting a couple of new members to the club who are under the age of 40 years old, uh, which is a, a, a big development for that club. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for linking us up with Shannon. And um, hopefully we can all brainstorm together other ways to leverage uh, this program as ways for, to help us in membership development moving forward too. Yeah, thank you, Ted. And, and absolutely. I mean, you know, again, like I said, for many of these folks, you know, particularly those that are moms, we have a few, Misha, who's the winner this year is a single mom uh, with three kids and, you know, obviously running this full-time thriving business. You know, it's tough time-wise. They're, they're uh, generally strapped for time, but when, they have the opportunity to serve and to give back, and particularly if it's events that are on the weekends when their, their shop's not open or something, they love to give. And, and the, the way someone put this to me was, 
you know, we look at things like Rotaract and Interact that kind of help those young people, those early years that we tee up and get them excited to things like RILA and other ways of getting folks excited about Rotary. And then there can be a bit of a gap before it's kind of later in someone's career uh, or when they're retired that generally they, they move into the stage of Rotarianship and being a member. So this can help to kind of bridge that gap in a lot of ways, this opportunity for, you know, generally small business owners are in their twenties, thirties, maybe forties, especially in these early days of a new business. Um, and so, you know, even if they're not able to become a member, as I said, the way Kelly responded uh, and wanted to jump in this year and um, you know, and, and Misha as well, uh, this year's winner said she's ready to do any, everything she can to promote the event next year and make sure that it's a huge success. And as I mentioned briefly earlier, you know, one of the things that's been, we did this the first year and again this year, and it's arguably the most important thing that we're doing for these business owners is giving them mentorship, giving them guidance, asking them, what do you, excuse me, what do you need help with? What are you struggling with? Where do you see are the levers that you can turn to really grow your business and take things to the next level? And so they tell us, yeah, okay, it's, it's sales, it's marketing, it's recruiting, it's fundraising, whatever it might be. And that's where our, our fellow Rotarians thrive, right? They're so excited to be able to jump in in some way that's really making an impact, right? They're, they're able to really make a difference in each of these companies quickly. You know, it doesn't take a ton of time for each of these mentorship relationships. This year, uh, we gave, uh, and it was frankly a bit arbitrary, but we said, okay, to the winner, uh, we awarded 20 hours of mentorship, second place, 10 hours of mentorship, and third place, five hours of mentorship. And as they've needed it, they've continued to, you know, ask for what they need. We check in every now and again and making sure they're growing and, and getting all the help they need. And Kelly, the first year winner, who you saw in that first video, is still working with one of her mentors now. Uh, they just developed a bond, really hit it off. They are able to help each other. Um, and so it's been a really fruitful relationship. So that's, you know, to be able to, to do that in such a way that has so positively impacted Kelly's business, it warms my heart. It's been tremendous. And as I said, you know, even if they don't become Rotarians, their perspective of Rotary has changed forever. Um, you know, unfortunately, so many of these folks, frankly, don't know what Rotary is, or they have some, you know, kind of closed minded view based on what they've heard in the past of what ro Rotary might be. Um, this gives them a totally different frame for what Rotary can be in their community and how it can impact their own lives. As I said, Misha's jumped in to uh, volunteer for next year's event, which we're really excited about. And so, you know, now it kind of came to this place where as I was preparing for this year's event, I would regularly go to our Rotary meetings that happen here in Princeville on the North Shore of Kauai and just share with my fellow Rotarians about what's happening, where we were in the process. Okay, applications are closed. We got 44 applicants. Now we're getting ready to do the interviews, et cetera, et cetera. And we get a lot of visitors because we have a beautiful venue where we have our events. Uh, so we get visiting Rotarians from all over the world. And time and again, as I would share about Catch a Wave and what we were doing, I'd have visiting Rotarians coming up to me saying, oh my God, this, this project sounds amazing. You know, we want more younger Rotarians like you, Greg, it'd be great to bring this to our club in some way. And so it really got my wheels turning that, okay, maybe there's some way to do this. Maybe there's some way to actually help these, these Rotarians run an event like this elsewhere. Um, and so this year, what I did was I made it a point to one way or the other document and every step and process along the way, everything that the team and I did to put this year's event together, I just wrote it down. Because I knew if nothing else, it would help this year and successive years within my own club to say, okay, you know, we need to do marketing. Here's what we've done in years past here. You know, my fellow Rotarians that are volunteering to help this year, you take this piece, you take this piece, you take this piece. And, you know, it's all laid out what you need to do. It just makes it easier for everyone to have that clear, concise, those steps in place. But I also figured that it might help us to then be able to share it with other Rotary clubs anywhere that wants to put on an event like this. So I'm willing and able to help uh, Rotary clubs anywhere around the world to catch a wave of their own. So 
I'd like to say thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. And I'm happy to open up to any questions you folks may have. Uh, Greg, what, if a club was looking to do this on their own, what's the level of effort, the number of people hours involved and money commitment that they would need to think about? Pulling great question. Up? Yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, you know, there's, there's two ways that I see doing this. Um, one is kind of the, the do it yourself. And the other is, uh, myself and my team help do it for you. Um, so the first would be, you know, a, a team, a club is ready and willing to jump in and, and do as much of the legwork as they can possibly do to make it happen. Um, and that we humbly ask it's a thousand dollars to put that together where we are just, just basically give you all of the steps that are needed for you to follow and go ahead and do it. Um, and so that on a man hours, you know, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, people hours, um, standpoint it's tough to say it's actually something i should take a closer look at um but i would say oh, total it's probably about maybe 30 to 50 hours i know it's a wide range but somewhere in that neighborhood uh you know all told i had a committee of uh, eight to ten rotarians these past two years so that gives you an idea of how many folks and most of the uh much of the heavy lifting has been on my part to kind of uh, run it and put it together. And we'd have regular meetings, keeping everything together. Uh, the marketing in the community has been a big piece that, that everyone has done. And then all the interviews and then really setting up that finale event. Um, so it's not tremendously time intensive, save for uh, kind of the one person championing it. And then the other option um, is uh, uh, $3,000 for me to run as much of it as I can for you. So basically helping to coordinate all the efforts, putting out all the messages to the small business owners in your community, um, coordinating everything from the interviews to, you know, once you have a venue in place, connecting with the right timing of things and, and um, advertisements and things like that to make sure I'm, I'm taking as much of it off your plate as I can. That's great. Um, and it, it sounds like uh, you also saw a lot of benefit to your club in terms of Rotary's public image. Very much, very much. Like I said, uh, particularly in this kind of, I'll call it 25 to 40 age range to, to generalize for a moment. Um, you know, many folks, many, many of my peers just don't know what Rotary is, or they think it's, uh, you know, just a bunch of old guys that get together to, to drink together or something. I, I don't know what they think. Um, but, you know, it's uh, to give the community this opportunity to see Rotary in a totally new light in a way that is supportive of things that they care about. Um, you know, my so I'm a millennial. I'm kind of in the tip of the spear of that generation. And uh, the unfortunate reality of many of my fellow millennials is, you know, kind of how does this benefit me as a mindset of a lot of folks? Um, well, when you're now presenting a way to help these folks with a business, to help these young people with their own business, whether they're thinking about starting something or they have started something, or you're seeing a fellow millennial get a bunch of help with their business. Now all of a sudden it gets much more real. It's like, wow, okay, these folks, these rotary folks do amazing stuff. Um, and I've, you know, now since a couple of years of doing this event, I run into folks that I don't know. I'll see them at a farmer's market or something. And they'll say, Hey, you're that, you're that rotary guy with the catch away of thing. Right. And I'll say, yeah, they're like, Oh my God, that was so cool. You know, and again, just that simple reframe for them of what rotary is and that it's cool, uh, is something that's tremendous. Right. Uh, and I know you and uh, Nalani and I have also done a little brainstorming of how we might leverage this program for membership development. Um, are there ways that we could even get some of the participants to uh, form a new Rotary Club that would be a, a non-traditional Rotary Club um, that um, adapts to their needs and of limited time and family involvement and so forth. Um, I, Nalani, anything you wanna add or ask Greg on the webinar about that? 
Well, first, congratulations, Greg. Great job. And Thank you very the much. enthusiasm of your community. And uh, as Ted mentioned about getting the word out, the, the image part of Rotary is, is fantastic. And uh, I look forward to having more talk story with the two of you on how we can um, bring all these people together with what they have learned and teach others in the community. And uh, I, I truly believe Rotary today is looking for people uh, who would like to be a part of the community and give back, but is unable, be it financially, be it time or everything else. But the, what they do have is that experience of mentorship that they can really teach and share with others. So hopefully we'll find a place for them is that right, Ted? I think there is always a place for people like that we could use. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think we just have to uh, look at new models of Rotary yeah. around satellite clubs, passport clubs, uh, or some hybrid of those kinds of things that exactly. may, may meet the needs of these entrepreneurs better and then leverage, as Greg's been doing in this program, the vast experience of uh, older Rotarians to help be subject matter, matter experts and mentors. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's been uh, one of the things for other folks who may watch this later for you, Naomi, is, uh, you know, that Nalani, Ted and I talked about was also that opportunity to have something like an e-club where, you know, maybe folks are, they get together once a month for a Palhana kind of thing, uh, you know, or just having that opportunity to, to not even necessarily have that that time commitment, but then they have the opportunity to serve in the community. You know, we as other clubs in that local area can say, okay, you know, we're doing trash pickup this Saturday that we do on the highway once a month, or uh, we've got this event happening down at Ted's Club, and you know, let's all go show support. And it's something on the weekends outside of business hours that that folks like that can be able to jump in on. I agree. Uh, what, one other thought, obviously the uh, Hanalei uh, Bay Club kicked this off and they ran it as a project of their club, um, but it, it seems to me it also could be a collaboration of a, of a group of clubs in a particular area uh, who want to run this program uh, in their area and um, see about forming a new club or getting some new people involved in their area as well. Yeah, I mean, we, we had a nice little collaboration there, Ted, you and I, um, and the folks at the Kauai Rotary Club out of Lihui as well jumped in uh, and at the very least offered that honorary first year membership uh, for the winner. So that was, you know, we were really grateful to you, Ted, and your club there for that. Um, and so things like that, right, it just kind of sparks and, and provides this opportunity for that, for that shared work. Great. Well, I'm, I'm sure as others uh, have a chance to uh, watch the replay of this webinar and, and talk with you individually, um, that they'll have other questions and ideas. But um, I thought this was a, a really useful program, not only for your club, but for the whole island of Kauai. Uh, and as you say, a model that even clubs on the mainland uh, started to latch on to and say, hey, that would really help us that we wanted to share this with all of our colleagues in the district and see if it might be a, a spark and a model uh, to help all the clubs in our district. Totally, yeah, we've had, I've spoken with some folks at clubs um, inland on the mainland that are on the coast that are like, yeah, we might need to change the name because we don't have many waves here in Kansas, but uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> still the model can prevail. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just say for anyone, uh, watching the replay, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, my email is greghorn27, so it's G-R-E-G-H-O-R-N-27 at gmail.com. Happy to talk more about it. That was outstanding. One great program you've come up with. Um, I need to ask you a quick question, though. How many of your members were actually involved with this production? Yeah, thank you. I mean, ultimately, in the core group of planning it, 
Uh, each of the first two years, we've had 10. 10 of my fellow Rotarians have jumped in to volunteer, Great. but countless others have jumped in to spread the word, to you know, talk with local entrepreneurs and invite them to apply or get people to show up at the final event. We had over 200 people at the final event. And so you know, it was really, our, our club was very excited. It was something different for the club members to get involved in and they jumped in completely, it was fun. And I can see this growing. So has it gotten larger and larger over the last, what, three years? now you're into your third year yeah we're into our third year now and uh, already have other rotary clubs around the country asking how they can put together a catch away with their own so I'm excited to help them too outstanding well with that uh, we actually have a district uh, or international convention in Hawaii this year so I'm hoping to see you there I will definitely be there it's uh, it's an island hop for me and uh, hoping I get in as a, as a breakout session to talk more about catch sounds great we love to hear uh, updates on that so hopefully you'll come back to the show Right on. Thanks again for having me, Wade. Aloha. Thank you for your time. With that, everybody, take a look at Catch a Wave program and see how that's working out for you. If you have any ideas or what ideas on how to get involved or want to do something about that, uh, we'll get you in contact with Greg. With that, thank you very much, and we will see you next time. Good job there, Greg.